But I didn't have the balls, bro. I know he doesn't want to talk money. I know he believes it out, but George made $317,000. Grabbing my dick. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing well. Today, we're in for a doozy, all right? Big, humongous drama between Logan Paul and his old co-host of the podcast, former friend, maybe acquaintance now, not really sure, George Janko. And look, I'm gonna get this out of the way off the bat. I know a lot of people who are watching this video aren't really the biggest of fans of Logan Paul, okay? Myself included. But in today's video, we are not only taking a look at the comments that George made about Logan Paul, but we're also taking a look at the Logan Paul response and we're just gonna be getting the full story here. Okay, so if you guys are interested, hang on for dear life because we're about to go balls deep inside Logan Paul and George J and George. Gentlemen, let's say you're having trouble getting it up and you wanna buy something to fix that problem. Today's episode is sponsored by the subscribe button. It does help me out a lot, helps out the channel a lot, and your support is always much appreciated. Whether or not that support is through the means of the like button, commenting, or just simply watching the video. But, you know, those of you who subscribe, you know, you guys are the very best. But be sure to subscribe. We're going for some subscribers by the end of the year. Much appreciated. Let's get into the video. What? Not you, not Caleb, not Kevin, not Dylan. Nobody fucking called me when I got fired. George Janko is an American YouTuber and podcast host. He became widely popular on Vine and later amassed a large following on Instagram and YouTube. In 2020, Janko appeared in the horror film Follow Me, uh, and then he did the Logan Paul podcast. I'm reading this off his Wikitubia, by the way. Uh, that's the research I have. All joking aside, though, I mean, obviously we know who George Janko is, right? He's basically uh, PewDiePie mixed with Obama, mixed with... Hillary Clinton mixed with Trump. And he became a member of the Logan Paul podcast experience known as Impulsive. And he was only on the show for, I want to say, a little over a year. And there ended up being a falling off during an episode with Bobby Lee. Now, Bobby Lee is a comedian. I'm not the biggest fan of Bobby Lee. I feel like Bobby Lee is just kind of a freak show. And that's the uh, comedy he does. So apparently, allegedly, according to George Janko, <laughs> on the Impulsive episode with Bobby Lee, Logan Paul, uh, Mike Majawaka, Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know why I said Mike Majalaka. That's that's honestly offensive. His name is Mike Malak. M-A-G-L-A-K. All right, he boned Lana Rhodes. Um, but yeah, anyway, so on this episode, Bobby Lee allegedly touched George Janko's cock, according to George. We're going to get into all of this and much, much more. For any of you guys missing context, I mean, there's, there's, I think Sunny V2 made a video on this. I mean, there's a full video into this, but I'm just gonna be basically breaking down the essentials of the podcast clip that talks about why there was this big falling out, as well as Logan Paul's response and George's response. And there was some Twitter stuff. We're gonna break it all down. Let's go. Oh, wait to go. Ain't no way. That was the craziest intro I've ever seen, bro. Straight up a poster of the next UFC 301 battle between the two fucking demonic dragons of male testosterone, George and Mike. And then in the background, we get the classic. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Off to a great start. I'm throbbing. Both of you guys down and be like, yo, we need to discuss these feelings. Right, right. But I didn't have the balls, bro. And the reason why I didn't is because I was just terrified of my own shadow, let alone you guys. You guys were the two guys that sat on my career. You I, always argue hated, back with I always hated being you guys, by the way. I told you that. All right, so we're about a few sentences into the podcast, and there's already quite a bit to unpack. Obviously, I don't follow George, Mike, Logan, fucking... I don't follow their everyday moves. I don't really know the entirety of this beef. That's what this video is for, so me, myself, and I, and yourself can learn together, but... I mean, already off the bat, we're getting pretty deep, pretty real. He's talking about, I'm scared of, I was scared of my career and my own shadow, and you guys didn't help me. And then Mike Malak's like, I always hated being you guys. It's Logan Paul and me. But Mike, it's like your asshole and Logan's asshole are sewed together by my semen web strings like Spider-Man. Basically, the point I'm trying to make is that Logan Paul and Mike Malak, or I should say Mike Malak, uh, is big time defender for Logan Paul. I don't understand why he wouldn't be. I mean, he can attribute basically a big chunk of his career, a big chunk of his notoriety from Logan being on the podcast, being out in public together, just sitting on the train next to Logan Paul, right? You're in a picture with Logan Paul. People are like, oh, who's that guy? And then they start buying your book and then they buy your one-to-one -one scale realistic dildo that you have for some reason. 
Don't ask how I know about that. What do you mean? I'm not you guys. It's a di- <laughs> <laughs> There's a dramatic difference in the relationships between the between both of those relationships. I don't know why you always because like I, I, are we what because do you, you guys both pissed me off okay. in different ways. Yeah, I've but, been still trying to figure out how, but I can list the reasons, but I feel like that wouldn't help. You piss me off for a variety of reasons. I could list them off, but I don't know if that would help. I feel like the very first step into resolving some sort of beef or issue, and I assume that's what they're doing because they're on this podcast. I don't think they're on the podcast to start verbally fighting each other, but that does happen a little bit into this. But I will say though, isn't the first step of therapy talking and then doing? Uh, shout out BetterHelp. I, how is BetterHelp still uh, a business, by the way? Like, don't they? Isn't that shit fake as fuck? I'm never getting a better help sponsor. It might, it might be cathartic, but I mean, I don't know how you want to. Do, I don't know which parts of everything were. Oh my God, George Janko vagina sighting number one. Talking about. Today. I think that, and when well, it comes to our relationship, it, it, it's going to be with any relationship. If I can't take responsibility and fix myself before even looking at your problems, like then I'm just not a good human because half of my issues with you probably stemmed from my behavior. The way I communicate, the way that I talk, the way I act, the way that I respond to my neighbors, they're going to respond to me in a certain way. This is such a mature, honest, well thought out way of speaking. And I'm honestly surprised going into this. I figured it would be 30 minutes of yelling which is kind of what I wanted. I got angry because I, I would forgive you a lot with these. <sighs> you want me to be honest? I'll just, I'll say it in a way where you don't have to bring up real material. I think that you're a street dude that came from selling drugs and your one street mentality, like my cousins that do sling is. Why would he just put all of his cousin's shit out there like that? What the fuck? Are his cousins cool with that? They have to be cool with that. They have to be either not doing that anymore. Well, he said they do sling, which makes me interpret that they are like actively in the streets of Detroit selling drugs to homeless people. But anyways, so Mike Malak angered George Janko because of his origin story that he used to sell drugs. Well, it relates to that at least. Let's see where he takes this point. I have to protect myself first and then I'll protect others. But that's, but that's not, and, and I, this is where we probably have to get into the material. Yeah. Okay, the Bobby Lee situation. Who was the first person that jumped off the couch and said, George just left, that was not good, we have to fix the situation. And, and, but did, and did who they not, tried to- Did they not cut shit that you should have stood up for me and said, hey, you can't cut that shit. That's we, gonna make him look like an idiot for leaving. Okay, let's, let's slow down and I'll, and I'll answer that. All right, this is my first major issue with this podcast and it's nothing George said, but it's actually just kind of like what happened in the whole situation that they're arguing about. Allegedly, in the Bobby Lee episode, there was a lot of discussion. I think a lot of it stemmed from George basically being like, yo, chill out, like, yo, you're making me uncomfortable. I believe that was actually cut. And the sad part about all of this was that there was no discussion being had. There was no, like, second thoughts. Like, there was no re-edit. Like, that was it. That was put on the internet. And everyone thought George was, like, this fucking little weak vagina. I shouldn't have said that. Sorry. Um, they he's, they said that George is like a fucking idiot for leaving the podcast, but there was context that was cut out. What the fuck, dude? We um we have always cut. This is all healthy, by the way. We have always <laughs> cut. Start crying. No, 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 no. Which please. by the way, which <laughs> which by the way would which by the way would be healthy. Look at Mike Malak, that little slight little. Oh yeah, crying would be healthy. Please, George. Please cry. Make this moment more viral. Please line my pockets up even more. You can't say that Mike Malak didn't have those thoughts in the back of his head when he said that little comment. Come on, Dumpy, you're just mad. Uh, Mike Malak is a mental health advocate. Okay, cool. He can be a mental health advocate and also want to get viral on social media. I mean, why do you think he boned Lana Rhodes for three years? We have numerous times on the show, which I'm sure a number of shows do, caught things that we believe will protect the integrity or reputation of the guest. That protected nobody but him. No, no, of the guest. That's, that's what I'm trying to... Well, no, what about no, the no. guy that you break bread with, bro? But, but we, we, we removed a number of things that you said on the podcast. Name one. Ooh. Uh, real quick, I just want to note that... Uh, and this is also kind of like a middle school thing. I don't know how middle school or max school it is, but George did just say that, oh, what about the guy you break bread with? Then I'm pretty sure later on, he said that he made no money on Impulsive. And then Logan Paul, in his response, he did show receipts of the money that George made. I do also want to elaborate further, though, that I do believe we are kind of getting sidetracked from the point in total, which is the fact that 
George left the podcast because Bobby Lee is kind of a psychopath, right? He's kind of a freak. But I will say though, since we're being fair to both sides, that is one thing you should pay attention to. Or this point is total horseshit and no one's following this whatsoever. Um, if so, I mean, leave a like on the video. Well, no, I'm not going. I'm not going. Booty, bro. No, no. Do you want me to? There was something that you said on the laser beam episode. What laser beam episode? Do you remember Lazar beam, laser beam in Australia when we did that episode? Dude, hold the fuck up. Did he just call him Lazar beam? That's not his name, right? It's it's laser beam. Dude, hold up. I know some of you guys watch that guy. Is it? Is it? Is that like an inside joke? Did he have a second channel called Lazar beam? L a z a a r. Because if so, I don't want to come off like I'm like a piece of shit or anything, but I think Mike Malak just totally butchered that shit. Oh, well, Dumpy, if you watch the episode, I mean, uh, Logan Paul, um, Logan Paul said his name wrong in the intro and it's an inside joke and then, and, uh, dude, shut the fuck up. I'd rather not say. I can tell, why don't I just tell you Just after. tell me, I'll beep it. You said something about like laughing at a girl getting hit. In like a parking lot, you saw like a oh, fight. Yeah, I just said the joke wrong. No, no, I understand that, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I didn't sexually just, harass somebody, man. I'm not. Oh my god, the conniving, violent stare of angst and anger by George. Check it out. Listen, I'm not trying to to die one to one. I'm just saying we. What the hell is that, bro? This podcast has so many great moments. Why did no one tell me to check this out? Why did nobody tell me to check this out? Why did no one tell me to make a video about this? He just simulated oral sex with his mouth for a podcast. Trying to, to die. But you, oh, okay, Mike, if, sure. if this was an episode that was you and what happened to you happened to you, and then the whole world thinks that I walked away because I can't take a joke, that's fucked. Well, bro. well, it. That's fucked. It parlayed into more stuff happening. That is fucked up. You can't do that. You can't cut someone out of context. Have the entire narrative be, this person is weak, they can't take a joke, they walked off the podcast because they're sensitive, blah, 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 when that wasn't the full context of what happened. Have that be the entire public opinion and not correct the record afterwards. That is fucked down the line. Like it just became, at that point, you saw me, I went on Bobby's show. Yeah. Right? And they cut around it. You said that well, you- I didn't, when, I have no control over that. I didn't. I, I, you saw, like, you I saw try to make I'm, peace with this guy. I know. Multi, you've seen me. <laughs> yeah. I've tried to make peace to them behind closed doors. I try to reach out. I try to be cool. But by the way, and I'll just say this, we'll just empty it out. I never had a problem with Bobby Lee. No, he knows I that. I had a problem with the way that Logan and you were kind of gassing him to keep doing. He started the episode putting his balls in my face. I let that one go. Then every two seconds, he kept grabbing my dick. I don't think... How would you feel I, if a man that I, has I, his back completely towards you, that only turns around to grab your dick, right. talk shit to your face, and you can't smack or beat the living well, brakes off well, of this guy? So, so I, because Logan makes me apologize to this man. Or I don't have a job on Impulsive anymore. Strong words from a strong man, Captain Insano. Strong words from a strong man, Captain Insano. Now to be 100% clear with you guys, I totally see where George is coming from in this situation. But I want to take a quick look and we're going to cut back and forth a little bit. I feel like I'll be kind of better, especially when they're talking about a certain topic. I do want to talk about Logan Paul's response for a second. It's pretty quick and cut and dry. Let's get into it. I had to start my own show because- And there it is right there. The first nuclear strike. The first impoundment of the booty hole of George Janko. In the OG podcast, George claimed that he spent 10,000 a month, 120,000 a year on Impulsive. Logan Paul responds saying that all expenses were paid for, prepaid Visa gift card, 10 Chuck E. Cheese coupons, and a 7-Eleven establishment. That was racist, I'm sorry. But Logan Paul has yet to address the Bobby Lee situation, which was a major crux of this entire debacle in the beginning. The rest of the things that George said, maybe they were said emotionally, he, maybe he didn't put enough thought into it, maybe he didn't really think it out before he said that, and that's why Logan Paul has all this proof and ammo to drop on him. But I will say, I'm not completely satisfied until Logan Paul addresses the elephant in the room, Bobby Lee's penis-touching habits and the fact that he got cut out of context and there was no narrative being fixed. This is a guy who's sending- Hey guys, watch out, watch out, watch out. If you guys make $5,000 a month, you're looked, as a, uh, looked at as a poor homeless cretin, you will not be seen in public with George Janko. We weren't making shit on the show. 5,000 a month, it wasn't shit. 
Dude, holy fuck, bro. I mean, some people would suck a cock for 5,000. Did make a sizable amount of money on the show. And by the what way, I'm always like, grateful. I was always grateful. Like that? Yeah, I don't like to talk about money. I know he doesn't want to talk money. I know he believes it out, but George made $317,000. Damn, Logan. Like, okay. <laughs> I know George doesn't want to talk about money, but uh, here's the accountant's entire George portfolio. <laughs> like, I understand why he's doing it, because he's trying to make it out to say that, like, he didn't make any money or whatever, but I don't know. Just the way he worded that was fucking hilarious. The way the clip was artificially edited by Logan Paul's editor who lives in a third world country. In the 15 months that he got paid for on Impulsive. The work requirements consisted of about three days a month, uh, three hours each day, traveling the world, networking, and meeting some of the coolest people ever. It comes out to about $2,300 per hour, and he also had 10% equity of the entire show. Where can I get this job? Oh my God, imagine that. Three hours of yap a day. Three days a month. That's nine hours of yapping a month. $2,300 an hour, 10% equity, millions of dollars in potential revenue earnings from yappage. This is where things get deep, okay? Would you guys do it? Would you guys sell your soul to Logan Paul? Would you do it, man? I mean, George, he did it for a little bit, but then the Bobby Lee thing, that was crossing the line. He had to get out of it. Would you guys do it, man? Let me know. I mean, would I do it? Probably what? not you not Caleb not Kevin not Dylan nobody what's up gangster. How you living? Good Bubba. How you doing? Bubba is abnormal is that who I think it is on the top right next to that beautiful lady. Oh my god. 1997 George totally understand we even praised one of the things that I love uh, right here I was like hey, we got to get you prime because I saw him drinking our competitor Oh my god that little thing in the background I've watched this clip so many times even editing this video right now recording it. It still got me I put my headphone up and I was like did you say my name? What's going on, bro? also my uh servant Alfred is here Hello! And he told me to call him. He was filming my reaction to tell me he took a deal with a competitor. I told him, please don't film. Like, I, I'd like to talk about this. I hope you're joking, by the way. The truth is, I thought it was a bad look that my best friend and co-host took a brand deal with our competitor without uh, consulting me, asking- If that's true, by the way, George fucking hates Logan Paul. Oh my God, it's so obvious. He wanted to do a video, or at least put the uh, cameo, a clip of a video, where he's literally getting Logan Paul's live, real reaction to saying, Hey, fuckface. I got a sponsorship with your competitor, Celsius. How does that taste? Like my ball sweat or what? What's Logan Paul gonna even say to that? Like, what the fuck? George is a psychopath, all right? Everyone in this situation is a psychopath. Logan is for uh, having money. Mike is for boning Lana Rhodes like two years ago. George is for having that idea for that psychotic skit. And then Bobby Lee is for touching penises. I mean, everyone in this whole entire story is a fucking freak. Me giving us even a chance to match it before he signed the deal because the audience that he's building, at least at the time on his own podcast was being funneled directly from the podcast that I was building with him. I said, hey dude, I understand you need to make money. The entire text is right here that I sent him after our conversation because I did understand his position if he needed to make money, but I thought it was also a little odd because he did make $317,000 in 15 months. Come on. Logan, you and I both know that $317,000 in 15 months isn't shit, especially if you're friends with Logan Paul. I assume that consists of going out to high profile dinners, parties. I mean, George was probably dropping bread, dude. He flew by that money, especially considering the fact that he only got to work three days a month. I mean, what kind of shitty boss are you, dude? $2,900 an hour? What a fucking piece of shit Logan Paul is, huh? Logan Paul piece of shit regardless i did tell him i can't have him on impulsive if he's going to take the deal with the competitor but if after he makes the money he wants to come back to the podcast he's more than welcome hey man where you're at there's no room for you to grow they won't let you grow they will not let you grow i thought saying that to mike was a little crazy he's grown a lot uh he has 2.7 million subscribers since we met he's a multi-millionaire best-selling author i tried as much as i could to help him get into those positions and it's not entirely because of me mike is a phenom in his own right hey mike it smells like a snickers all right i've already ventured it smells like a Snickers. And he capitalized on the platform that I gave him, which is awesome. Hey, George, um, you are broke and we gave you a lot of money. Sorry that a dude touched your dick and made you uncomfortable and we cut it out of context. I would have done that differently. But uh, yeah, you made a lot of money and I put you on and I can put other people on. 
and uh, fuck you. If you guys enjoyed this kind of like lighthearted approach, not really taking shit seriously, making jokes approach to drama content, drama videos, let me know if you guys enjoyed this. Like genuinely, if you're this far in the video, I would love and I would be grateful to hear you guys' opinion. Obviously, you're not inclined to comment. I don't want to force you to do anything you don't want to do, but it would mean a lot to me if you guys could let me know how you guys feel about this type of video. If it was good, bad, terrible, never do it again, quit YouTube, all that would be great. As well as just leaving a like and subscribing if you have not done so already. Both of those things do help me out a shit ton. I am going to go right now, after I record this, edit this video, and upload this video. So, um, I'm going to go do that. You guys, you know, you're, you're already watching this. You probably got some popcorn and some cinnamon rolls and some... Yeah, you guys enjoy your night, man. Have a great night, day, wherever you are. Peace.